Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ESL1 in Cologne for 2014. The grand finals here at Gamescom 2014. We've had a terrific couple of days of Battlefield 4. Since some upsets along the way. Uh, big teams have fallen in the group stages, no less. But now we come to the grand final, no less, to crown our third champion of the year. Fnatic already have one in the book. They're going for their second, whilst GC are in their first ever grand final here at ESL 1. Let's find out who makes it to the champion's trophy and the first prize check as well. Part of a fund of $35,000 as ever ESL 1 seasons are. Our first team to the stage have already been the champions once. They are the reigning ESL 1 champions. They are Fnatic. And they will go head to head with a team who have surprised many with their great displays of comeback skills here at ESL 1 Cologne. Yesterday, they almost went out in the very first round. They struggled to get out of the group stage. They struggled to get out of the playoffs. They then struggled again in the semi-finals, yet through it all, they've been resilient and they've made the grand final. Please welcome GC. We're also going to grab a quick word with uh, one of the players from each side. First of all, with Fnatic, just one quick question. I know you guys are prepared. I know you've worked hard, but this isn't the team you expected to play against. So how does that matter to you? Does it matter to you? Not a lot, but they play different than other teams. So we just need to play a bit different as well. OK, well, best of luck to Fnatic and GC. Incredible run. It's a fairy tale story in many ways because you guys just didn't look very good early yesterday. Then you came back and then today you struggled again. And again, you never give up. So can you take these boys? Yeah, yeah, we, we are OK for the final. And uh, if Najik are a big, big team, uh, we are not afraid. So let's go. All right, let's go. Best of luck, gentlemen. It's game on time here at ESL 1 for the grand final of Battlefield 4. Take it away, guys. Thank you for that, Paul. And oh, it's the big game. It's the big one. It's a best of five here in the grand finals of the summer season. Fnatic Gamers Connection. I kind of want to guess the percentage of people who vote for Fnatic in this one. Remember to head over to uh, esl-1.com slash battlefield. And we're going to find out, you know, who's the, who's the good team here? Can Fnatic repeat back-to-back -back results? That's the real question. Or actually, I guess the real question is, can PKD come back and win? Well, yeah, well, I mean... Looking at GC, they said they were confident there on the stage, and uh, it's really nice to see that they're uh, they're up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. Like Paul said in that intro, they've really kind of not struggled, well, they kind of struggled to be where they are now in the grand final. But the fact that every single fight, every single game they've played has been a real tooth and nail brawl to get yeah. to, to get yeah. that win, and then you contrast that with Fnatic, where they turned up, won their games two 0 strolled off stage, had a nice good night's sleep, and you know. The both of them, they had a bit of a, uh, a bit of a different approach to getting where they got, but they both did it, and it's really exciting to see maybe not such a familiar face of GC on that yeah. grand final stage. I think one thing we can both agree on is the fact that it's nice to have these new people, these new teams coming into this one um, to really challenge, you know, the top teams. And we're gonna find out obviously very soon what the maps are gonna be. Remember, it's a best of five, so we're gonna have a couple of extra maps in this one potentially. We're gonna go for a uh, coin flip. Ooh. You know, I've actually one time seen this before where. The player didn't know which side was head or tail, so he thought he actually won. Did he start celebrating? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It, it, was, it, was, it was sad. I felt bad for him. All right, so. Okay. What are they going to go for here? So I'm going to be No surprise. No surprises there. Mm, yeah. Now, the next one I'm interested in, I would... I can only expect that both teams aren't going to be concerned with getting rid of Dam. I know Fnatic were really big on Dawnbreaker. They didn't, so... First pick Dawnbreaker, second Locker. Obviously, if Fnatic are looking to wrap this up in three, they're going to be looking for maps that they're, they're going to be picking strong maps, not saving and banking them. They're instead going to be hanging out, trying to bring them as fast as possible. We do see Railway. Langkang third, Railway fourth, and Paracel fifth. All right, so I'm actually really surprised to see Storm last. 
I'm actually amazed at it. I, the fact that we've seen it so many times of, over the course of the playoffs. You know, Dawnbreaker, Locker, those are ones you know you kind of expect coming to this. I was expected to see you know Zavod, or I wasn't expecting. I was, I know I was expecting to see Zavod. I'm trying to think in my hey. head. Um, to be played, and it was actually taken away right away. I guess Fnatic not really favoring that map too much, or even Gamers Connection in that one. But you know, early predictions. Looking at the map pool alone: Dawnbreaker, Locker, Dam, Railway, Storm. It's a lot of Fnatic in there. It's a lot of Fnatic in there indeed. But before we talk about Fnatic, those are the players you're going to be seeing play. Obviously, you've got Jika, Zia, Fred, who are, I despise his name, Rila, and Hex. It's probably really easy to pronounce it's with a French accent. Rila! <laughs> Rila! Yeah. Yeah, he just he probably fell asleep as he was pressing that, holding down the <laughs> A key. It's kind of like the old Waza. Oh, that's, that's how I go about it. But yeah, obviously, just seeing the rosters here now, of course, Fnatic. Almost, almost in perfect height. Synchronization in their picture, but as we do oh, have quite Grunts, nice. more unfixed Valo, too easy. We just heard from more a little bit earlier on and his thoughts in this game. You know, they're, says they're going to play a little bit differently, so we should play a little bit differently. And Fnatic have already proven that they can do that. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> if any team can adapt, <laughs> a team like Fnatic, I, I, I keep bringing up this elasticity, and it's a really strange way to summarize, especially drunks. But they really have this kind of complete flexibility in their play where they can be these nasty little turrets who as soon as they get an AB, you know, any two site hold, they will lock in and push picking up a site does not gain anything because they've already got a cheeky rotate back around to pick up the site that you left behind. So Fnatic, they have the ability and uh, we're all well aware of that, but they have those star players. Vanu Taja, as someone who picks a g any game, you know, you name a game, he's probably been at the top of it. He's the guy... World of Warcraft. Yeah. There's no aiming in that. Uh, yeah, there's no aiming in that. <laughs> it's true, there's no skill shots. As you can see, 89% of you out there are voting for Fnatic. 11% for Gamers Connection. A little bit surprised it's not more in favor of Fnatic. But then again, you know, we've seen some good things out of GC. We've seen that they get some momentum going. You know, we, uh, actually in the last game alone, the last best of three, you know, we saw Fnatic, they're beatable. They're, they're mortal. They're not, yeah. you know, some computer out there just playing, you know, beating the chess champions in the world. They can be beat here. But the real thing is, can Gamers Connection rise to the occasion? And... One thing we've seen about GC is the fact that they all have really consistent players. You know, uh, they all consistently do pretty well. They all consistently put up good numbers. There's no one that really kind of stands out in their team. But now into this one, I, I feel like they kind of need that. They need someone to stand out or just the entire team to do that. And I believe we're getting ready very soon. Just waiting on uh, one more person. I think he's just taking a quick break here, just trying to fix a couple of settings. And Dawnbreaker, I mean, we saw Fnatic just on it against Pete Kitty and they won 65. So, looking at this one, we obviously, I mean, with Dawnbreaker, it's a map that we know Fnatic are really strong on. I'm surprised that they, I mean, obviously they first picked it, but that the GC left it in. There are obviously more maps that they were more concerned about. Yeah. I suppose GC have had some good results on it, but I mean, who was the biggest test on this map? It has to be, thinking back, casting my For mind Gamers back. Connection? Yeah, GC on Dawnbreaker. I can only, did they play it against uh, MYM? They played against uh, Exertus and one with okay. 49. Let um, me look at past results here. They played against uh, Vox at 179. Right, so they've, they've only really played against... Uh, and they lost Exertus 26 on Dawnbreaker the they first lost? time. lost? Wow, okay. The so first time. The sec they won the second time. But, I mean, regardless, the fact that they had that result at all against Exertus does suggest, I mean, Fnatic won of their map. <laughs> well, the fact that they played in every single best of three they've had so far. Yeah. <laughs> so like, Fnatic have been fighting for this map, and every time they wanted it, they got it. So... Um, with that in mind, Fnatic going to be trying to come out of the gate really, really strong with this one. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, get prepared here. About to drop in again with five seconds left on the countdown. It's the grand finals here of the ESL1 Battlefield 4 Summer Season. And Fnatic, are they going to repeat and take it two, uh, two seasons in a row? Or will Gamers Connection come out and upset them here? And as we kick this one off, over onto Dawnbreaker Fnatic. Going to be on the Chinese side here. And of course, we're going to have Gamers Connection over on the US side. And GC going for a little bit of an early push here onto B, which they did not do earlier on. Actually, sorry, they did do that and they caught teams off guard. And all right now, it's working out well for them so far. Fnatic going to play this one a little bit safer. You see Unfix trying to go for the push that we had Mort do earlier on. He will be shut down on that one. Cool. Now Mort will be over here at that A5 trying to defend against this push that will be coming very soon. Yeah, and GC were confident they've started to uh, show that in their play. Starting strong, managing to secure up early B, C, hold. Straight away though, losing out on those 1v1s leaves too easy and nice and uh, will give them a free B site. So that's going to come under Fnatic control. Holding steady, knows he's just got to sit tight on the flag. Meantime though, Jika going to be heading to the meeting room on that A site. 
He's trying to come in from the back side I was here. Say, he's trying to have the element of surprise, but Mort is not really in a position to be surprised. He says, holding the angle, doesn't need to do too much. And Rila, or Rila, <laughs> starting to consider a push. It's such a tough side to push because there's so many options. There's so many potential defensive positions. And uh, right now, Mort it didn't is. even need to move. And he changed his mind, completely relocating. And it's out. We're seeing that yet again that BC hold in favor of GC. Well, they went really aggressive towards A, as you just saw, but then once they realized B was being under attack and that they can maintain it, they fell back and played it very defensive. Basically, every flag up for grabs off Fnatic, gonna pick up the C flag oh. here. B gonna be picked up as well, potentially. And well, Gamers Connection only gonna come out with an A flag on that one. A little bit unfortunate for them, but Fnatic not winning just yet. They're still down four tickets here. I mean, straight away, we see that complete change of guard. The two sites that were under French control changing to Fnatic, and then the one that wasn't now in GC hands. So. See where this goes. See the Seasight's under some heavy fire. Drunk's actually doing a great play at B, managing to take down Jika. That's the defensive player down, and instead of trying to uh, sit in on the site, he is on the move. He's maybe considering a trip cap, especially considering now that A. Ooh. Oh, sorry, make it C. Look at this. Sorry. And yeah, I looked at your face, and you're like, oh my god, he's doing oh. it again. Hexus using the sniper riffle, the snipper riffle. <laughs> You got to kill with it, but unfortunately his dead body lays there in waste. And uh, I wonder if he's going to continue with that. He was trying to peek over towards Catwalk, giving that little bit of a potential to push into it. Obviously, it's a little bit hard to hit long shots, but with a sniper rifle, it makes it pretty damn easy. And LG are going to get naded down here, so we will be destroyed. But look at this. The back spawn's coming in for Gamers Connection. They're going to push in for this. And Fnatic, what's their answer? They're kind of squished in, or at least in the hands of this one man right next to Valu. And that will be too easy. Who? We have a decision to make. Do we push back towards C? Do we push towards A? And it looks like Fnatic's not even sure as they have to defend B first before they can even do the second move. Yeah, right now. I mean, B is changing towards that GC. It's starting to turn blue. The nades come raining in towards Fred. He's going to be trying to relocate. That's a new one, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> it, makes, it makes more sense. I mean, I think it's better than fraud. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be Fred from now on as we see the A site being pushed in. Valutaja, a player who needs no introduction. And, uh, he's just going to be roaming around looking for some uh, opposing blood. He's not going to find out. He goes down. Big play from, I believe it was Zia, who has done nothing but perform in this game. Other players have had this kind of up and down uh, play, whereas this has been the constant constant performance from Zia. Admittedly, right now he is two for five, but he has picked up the frags when he needs to. And uh, Seasight is starting to transform all pretty good for Fnatic. They're popping spawns on it. Three players now swarming that Seasight. And you see Jika running with his tail between his legs, gets taken down in the process. And now we see this constant kind of resource bat management game in mid where constantly whoever tries to rotate to the A or the C site loses out on their control of B. So, I mean, what can these teams do to maintain B while roaming around for those other two sites? I think just not overcommit. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a little bit of, of nerves on the teams right now considering what's on the line. And if you commit too many people back towards a flag, then you're going to lose out on one that you were previously defending. And obviously, you have to give credit to the, uh, to the opposing team to recognize this and to push straight in for it. And well, right now, as you can see, it's a little bit of a lead for Fnatic. Six tickets. They're looking to pick up the A flag and they're going to be able to maintain B for a little bit longer. And honestly, Gamers Connection not making this easy for Fnatic here. They're definitely pushing them. And I'm curious to see how this game is going to develop the next couple of minutes. Let's see, Valo doesn't really miss many shots. It's a Conorella. And he's going to defend onto that B flag, and he will get taken down from the side, but he at least gets an assist with Too Easy coming in. And it looks like B will be turned over here. I don't know for how long, though, as we do see the attack coming in. Fnatic looking for the charge, but Rella picks up one. He'll be attacked from the side again. Over towards Catwalk, he will be dropped here. And right now, Fnatic are kind of struggling to get a second flag. I mean, both teams are struggling right now to maintain a two flag hold here, and that kind of shows you these teams are pretty evenly matched. Yeah, and it's really good to see GC making Fnatic sweat, and it's perfect in this grand final, obviously considering this is a best of five. If GC starts strong, stop Fnatic from trying to, you know, picking up an early map without GC really being present. Right now, this could very well be a trip cap. Two players from GC on A. No real presence on that C flag, but they don't need to right now as A has been secured. It's a trip cap, and Fnatic's resources are all in that top side of the map, but there's players there to receive them. Two, in fact. Fro coming over the top, though. He's going to get drunk. I just called him Fro as well. It's actually Fred. <laughs> And, You're uh, just making it up. Names I'm right just going to keep renaming him. But that trip cap is lasting longer than it should. It seems to be a GC trend when they get a trip cap. They hold on to it. Finally, A's integrity is being questioned. Three players dropping in. 
from Fnatic. That's going to secure A, but I mean, with the BC hold and with all these dead Fnatic players in this B site, they're going to maybe consider pushing down that long street, but not with this presence from GC, though. Jika and Hexis both coming in now, trying to punish them if they start to leave that A site. Hexis is going to be the first man in. We'll tag along with him, see what he can do. He picks Ooh. up first corner Valu. Not easy to win 1v1 against him, but he makes it look easy. And that will be A taken. And look at this. Fnatic just aren't picking up the kills, it, it seems like. As you see, 6-9, 6-9, 8-4, 13-6. Six, two easies, he's doing it at least. But again, on the side of uh, you know Gamers Connection, you know, almost everyone with the positive KDA, everyone really stepping up with some kills here. And Fnatic, they're definitely struggling right now. As you see, B being contested, C being contested as well here. Fnatic finally going to lock down C, but they will uh, potentially actually even pick up B. So we might see them finally get a 2-1, to one, maybe even a trip cap if they can hold these pushes that are coming in from multiple directions. It just seems to be this constant battle, constantly struggling to keep the sights that they've already got when pushing for more. Right now, though, there's a battle. You can see Fred here under some serious fire. Manages to get away with it, though. Looking for the regen. He's not going to get it as he gets taken down. And that C site remains. Do they know he's here in Fnatic's oh. hands? I think Rella is, uh, yeah, his whereabouts are known. Whether or not he's just going to hang out in here for as long as possible. Waste as much time. And, uh, I mean, I think there's two players searching for it. Yeah, two. Make it three Fnatic players all around that C site. And he's just finally going to fall. But that kept him busy. Time. Yeah. Look at that. That's something that Fnatic have been doing quite a lot, actually. Making mistakes, applying too many players to uh, solving one-player pushes. And that means that the B site now switches over to GC. And GC right now seems to be playing almost better as a team. It seems like they are. And the score definitely reflects that. And, you know, not to kind of... Uh, uh, be, uh, or not to mean too harsh on Fnatic, because the fact is, last season, they won undefeated. Like, they won 3-0 in the Grand Finals against Epsilon. Wow. Uh, and then the fact that right now they're being pushed here is obviously a sign that, uh, you know, Gamers Kitchen doing a great job. Obviously a trip cap coming in for Fnatic so they can start to take away the ticket lead that we sit, uh, did see Gamers Kitchen have. C going to be maintained. A though, it's up in the hands. One man, oh, two men now. Too easy. The biggest fragger picking up another here. Looking for maybe the second one, maybe to lock this one down. Tries to get the revive in. He does buy a little bit of time here. Hiding behind the desk. Looks like he will force them back. A going to be picked up here, and that will be the trip cap remained. And now Fnatic going to pull ahead here by a one ticket lead, two tickets actually, in just the last few seconds. And more, well, he's the last man alive over towards A. He's going to have to have to push in. Maybe they're going to throw some respawns on top of him. I'm not sure just yet. Depends if they want to bring the fight to them or not. Yeah, and GC needs to kind of come into defensive mode, try and defend C. I mean, I mean B make make it as they did start trying to change it. Managed to make it neutral, but couldn't quite put the GC flag flying high. You know what's funny? What's that? On, uh, on Twitter, Too Easy was complaining that he had a, a setting wrong on his computer <clears throat> and it was making it so his shots were registering. Right. So he obviously changed that, fixed it, and he's 20 and 10 yeah. in eight <laughs> and a half minutes. <laughs> That's, That's kind of a sign. I wonder if he's been playing like that the entire tournament, but he's Did definitely he? stepping up right now. Okay, so Too Easy, whether, in, whether or not it was just a... Uh, there was a word I was looking for, and it's, fluke. it's gone. Yeah, whether or not it's a fluke or whether or not it's just, you know, changed his mindset, got him that little bit more engaged and immersed into the game. I'm going to randomly shout a word out at some point, and when <laughs> I do, it will be the one I was looking for. Right now, though, GC trying to change the color of this map, finally neutralizing that trip cap into an AB hold, and it's something that if they can hold on to, with a pressure like Valutaja coming up on this side, this could get messy. Actually, Valutaja not going to be coming out straight away, keeping the option to drop down if he does come into Ooh, heavy fire. That's a sniper Great rifle. positioning there. Hexis making this same choice again to pick up the sniper. I still don't really see its relevance here, especially in the grand final. He must see some use in it, and so do GC as they do shut down Valutaja and keep that site under their control. Still, ticket it's neck and neck. Fnatic edging forward with this BC hold. We'll see what too easy has gone up his sleeve. 21 kills. That is unbelievable. One of the higher kills. Highest, sorry, we've, we've seen He's so doing far. the frag game right now. Like he's not even playing the, the, the flies. Doesn't the rest of his team do that while he just runs around picking up kills? And, and right it now works. It's, it's, it does. If it works, why not? If you're forcing two or three players for the opposing team to be constantly on timers and constantly fearing you, then you are keeping so many players away from the sites without necessarily having to be on them yourself. Drunks will be taken down at that B flag. You see 28 to 11, one of the actually the closest score to Fnatic losing out on a half here right now. I mean, they have not been taken down this low since playoffs or since before playoffs. And right now we even see a trip cut coming in. We could even see finally the first time a team takes away a map here from, or takes away a half and a map from Fnatic and Cirella waiting for the push from Hedges. Valo's going to be the man to do it. Honestly, it's been fantastic with his aim so far here. 
that 14 and 12. Gonna be chased down here, and it will get a trade here with uh, Unfix actually picking up the kill. And we'll get the revive in the last second as well. But either way, as you can see, it's 9 to 12. Here we <laughs> this is becoming so damn close here. This is not expected. You saw the vote come in. It was clearly a favorite Fnatic, but right now, Gamers Connection, they've they did something. They ate their Wheaties, they, they practiced, they were prepared for Fnatic because right now it's showing. It's really good to see. This could quite well be the grand final we were so excited for. We know we were worried that perhaps Fnatic would put, bring the edge, but right now GC bringing their A game and may even edge it with that slight ticket lead going into the second half. Might have to make a push right Ooh. now here as they do see a trade again between two easy. But look at this, they swarm on top of the B flag as quick as they possibly can. Fnatic trying to get the C cap here as though I think trade very, very closely. But you know what? Here it is. Gamers Connection, they're going to be the first team here at the playoffs to take a half off of Fnatic. Not a big lead. And I might have jumped the gun a little bit earlier. You can see still being contested. But there we go. Hex just picks up the kill. And that will, it, uh, will be it. Four tickets. They've drawn blood in Fnatic. I'm, that's not easy to do. I'm raising my eyebrows. Eyebrows are being raised. I'm like, wow, I mean, GC could do this. Four tickets. And if, the, if they play as closely as they did in that first half, those four tickets could be all they need. Really, really close game there. Hex is saying the sniper in chat is highlighting that. He finished yeah. 17 and 13. I don't know how often he was using it, but he had a good score nonetheless, even though he switched into the sniper's kit. So, yeah, the top fragger for GC occasionally dabbling in the sniper. Uh, if you're Fnatic and you're getting killed by a sniper, a class we rarely see in competitive Battlefield, that's a little statement to Fnatic, and I hope, I mean, I hope that it doesn't start playing on their minds too no, much. No, no, definitely not. I mean, it doesn't really offer too much. I don't. I didn't actually think I saw him get more than one kill with it. Obviously, I was oh, looking around the other map, too, yeah. but it wasn't that impactful. It's not what caused the game. It was just Fnatic constantly getting pulled in directions and not really reading into it. They're overcommitting the resources to cover a, a flag, and because of that, Gamer Session just pushed in a flag right behind him, took it from right under their feet, or right under their noses, I guess is the correct term, and been able to pick up a, hit, uh, a victory here. So first half is complete, and uh, four tickets, <laughs> four. That's the lowest the number I think I've ever written down on this uh, on my notepad. It is the lowest. 17, I think, was the second closest. Yeah. Great. Okay. Definitely a close one here. And I want the second half to be kicking off very soon, guys. We're going to find out which team is going to take the one map lead here in this best of five in the grand finals of the summer season. Now, Gamers Connection going to be over on the Chinese side, Fnatic over on the US side. And I wonder what's going to happen at the beginning because we saw. You know, Gamers Connection challenged B right away. They wanted to always challenge B because teams weren't doing that anymore. They stopped doing that on Dawnbreaker when the playoffs came around and it caught, you know, uh, their opponent off guard earlier on and they might be able to do it yet again here. It's interesting because uh, what Fnatic offer is obviously their season. They've been around since, uh, well, since the first season, right? Seasons have been three. around, well, even before well, that. the same lineup? Well, minus drunks. Minus drunks. That is yeah. okay. So these guys are veterans of the scene, and to see GC admittedly have been around as well, but the fact that they're here challenging Fnatic is what really makes the final grand. Uh, we'll see what's going on right now. CMB picked up early. It's kind of a mirror of what you know, we saw first. No, I don't want to look at the crowd because we should be in game here. As it's already started 20 seconds in, and we already missed out on BC being taken here. Even might be picked up for Fnatic. His value is pushed up and. Right now, if he picks up this kill, it very well could come in. Nade going to be thrown in right after. He's going to force him back, picks up the kill. Funny thing is, he uses his nades not to kill you, but to draw you out of a position so yeah. he can shoot you. It's true. And he knows, you know, you can. Eat. it's a choice of between die to my nade or die to me. Valitaja not really giving them the best ultimatums right now. As we do see our trip cap going to be short-lived as Hexis has successfully rotated to C. But a great start for Fnatic. And this is the start that GC had in that first half. So obviously that US start helping both teams start as they mean to go on. All right, so, you know, Machine, we've always talked about throughout this, uh, well, this weekend, how adaptation is so necessary within teams. We're looking at the top team in Europe right now from last season, and we're finding out how they're going to adapt from the first half to the second. And I think we've already seen a, a great change in them. They have a 20 ticket lead, plus, uh, or beyond that, they're maintaining B, they're maintaining A, they're playing a lot smarter this time. And we're finally going to see, you know, what a good team that can adapt really quickly can do. Yeah, it's pretty insane, just, just how quick they can adapt. I mean, right now, they're looking to pick up a triple cap again, constantly pressuring. Actually, it's Hexis who's pressuring on this A side, but Drunks is going to be bouncing around alongside Mort. And, uh, here he is, the man at the moment who's got picked up two frags already. The Frenchie, actually. French. The lone Frenchie. The lone Frenchie up against the French team. GC just coming across. It's a pretty short plane ride for them to get over here. <laughs> 
<laughs> Drugs, you beast. You killed three people with that grenade. Two of them were your teammates. <laughs> I told him, you know, nade yourself once throughout throughout the, uh, the weekend. And you know what? He did something better. He killed two of his teammates and an opponent. Right. Oh, okay, so this is GC's <laughs> first time they've edged forward in terms of sights. They managed to pick up AC, and you can actually see the positioning in that top right corner. Jick is trying to ensure they don't spawn up towards that sea with a random respawn. But right now, that may not be the real problem at the moment because this fan Fnatic are swarming the A site. B, there's two players from GC there. Oh, sorry, from Fnatic there. And they could maybe extend towards C, but this is where Fnatic have made mistakes in the past. They don't need it. They need to stop being greedy. Something that they can uh, sometimes get a bit confused, a bit, a bit lost in the moment, and start trying to push for a third. It kind of could be because they're used to, you know, playing against lesser teams. Obviously, they didn't, they didn't have a hard game coming into this at all, and they're finally getting matched up against their good team, and, you know, they're being punished for overcommitting on, on a defense. And because of that, they have to change things up a little bit, maybe respect that out of Gamers Connection and play a little bit of a different style. But you know what? They have a 30-ticket lead. They're making it work here. They're going to pick up B yet again. And, well, I hate to say it, but Gamers Connection, they're starting to struggle a little bit. They need to see, they themselves need to adapt. They already picked up a first half victory, but they need to change their play style from that to this because Fnatic has already switched things up almost 180 degrees. Yeah, Fnatic, a completely different team. And the way they've, they've, they've changed, and I don't think GC have quite clocked on right now, is that they seem to be traveling in pairs. I haven't seen a lone Fnatic player, other than perhaps maybe Valutaja, who's yet again making this pro, like, kind of push towards himself A. Himself is his own pair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> all he needs is himself. But everyone else is in this kind of double duo, like, combo. They, they're not leaving anyone on their own, and it's working beautifully. GC, however, are getting caught out. This time, we're seeing the uh, GC side picking up A. Valutaja is being a bit quiet on A, leaving his presence to be uh, yet to be discovered, and he's going to just chill out, wait for perhaps GC players to send themselves towards B, and they're doing just that. Right now, though, GC seem to keep hold of A and B. People starting to spawn on Valutage. The man, I said, goes alone, and as he does get spawned on, he does go down, so leaving un drunks to really start being the spawn point for Fnatic because he's in a pretty good position for us. His team right now. He's going to try and maybe consider pushing towards that B site. B is such a tough site to hold on to, though. There's so many different points that people can pick you from, keep their eyes on, or at least spot you for the rest of their team. It's a tough one to maintain. You know, it's it's funny. You know what FedEx doing to Gamers Connection? I feel like they're doing the same thing that GC did to them. They're sending one man, Valu, unfixed, whatever, back towards a back cap. And they're forcing the Gamers Connection to put too many people to defend. Yeah. Exactly the, the same fault Fnatic is making in the first half here. And right now, we need to see if they can uh, pretty much counter that one here. They're going to pick up A and go for an orthodox CA hold here. But you know what? It's giving them tickets. It's giving them a lead here. It's keeping them above that four ticket threshold. And Valo now even working towards the catwalk. It's very seldom you see him over this direction, but it also shows that it's really necessary for them to retake it if they're going to send in the big guns. Let's see if he can pick up anything here. As you can see, he's actually being shot at quite a bit here. Well off to the side, waiting for him. Gets the kill with the grenade. Gets the revive. And well, the big guns will live to fight another day. Yeah, and if they want to keep hold of this one, they're going to have to set up something a bit stronger. Right now, they are only just getting away with these uh, these kind of defensive maneuvers against Fnatic's attack. Fnatic, they're back to the drawing board, back to that C site, and at the moment, they're just going to try and find a pick somewhere. Right now, though, look at this defensive line. If you have a quick look at the overview, you see this red line just straight down the middle, stopping them, letting them, just forcing them to respawn at C, and there's no way in hell. <laughs> I was about to eat my words. Unfix has managed to run straight down. He's gone the long route. It's been a complete marathon, 26 miles later, and he has managed to get over to where he knew what they were going to try and do, setting up that perimeter. And if he makes this... Oh, he's, oh, he's completely he fluffed to. his lines. He's revealed his location, and surely that's going to cause a rotate from the defensive players. He's now under heavy scrutiny. He goes down, and that is the mistake that's going to cost him, as that could have been the... Uh, well, as could I say that, cap. <laughs> beast type from Mort. Wow. Could have been a trip cap, though. It could have been. And obviously, could have given him a huge lead, but a little bit unfortunate. But, you know, small mistakes like that can't come back to haunt you, especially when there's only a four-ticket difference between the two teams. But nonetheless, you can see Gia Texas working over towards this direction. Too easy. Pick up another frag. Remember, he had 24 kills, I believe it was, last game, or 23. Ridiculous scoreline out of him. Not performing as well this time. He's in that 10 and 10. It's a little yeah. early, but at eight minutes in, he had 20 kills. Yeah, We're but already I mean, six minutes into. You said Fnatic one. are playing differently, and that maybe that is kind of putting a leash back onto Too Easy, saying he did great, but now we're going to try something new. <laughs> That's great, but we want you to stop looking so good. We want to yeah. look good as a team. We so look good as calm a team. down. Let's get some kills here. As you can see, Valo at ten and five now. So if Too Easy is stepping up, it's going to be Valo. He's now eleven and five. Probably continue to push in towards this A flag. He's getting shot down, and that will be stopped here. But more coming in. Very seldom you see him attacking flags as he does get taken down right there. As he does pick up one though before that in his troubles. 
there we go. Gamers Connection, two to one hold. They're starting to build. Well, not starting to build a lead, but they're starting to catch back up here and hopefully take a lead for themselves. Really impressed if they can hold on to this now because they've been struggling to keep B under their, under their wraps. Especially when Valley Tarja turns up and right now Unfixed is casting his eyes over there. Valley Tarja is still going to be capping that flag. He's just cautious of these nades and rightfully so getting away from that one as he throws one of his own. Just going to be trying to raise that US flag and he's going to do just that. Takes a frag with him as he's going to run away. Rila sent to an early grave. 53 to 46 now. Very, very neck and neck. Started very strongly for now, but GC climbing back up. Down, but not out. And obviously, don't forget, guys, that four tickets from the first half could quite possibly come into play here. Very well could. Now we're going to see actually Rela do the same thing that we just saw Unfix do. Go for the very long rotate. They're going to go for C here. More try to defend this one as he's, on it. he's able to actually pick up one kill on the Hex. He's looking for a second though. Let's see, we'll at least be neutralized and we'll be capped over here in just a few seconds as he gets the assist in. Stops the cap on C actually with the uh, the kill assist and that allows him to hold his 2-1 and now Drunks, he's the one pushing up towards his A flag. He wants to give it a go. See his teammates do it and pick up so many kills. And you can see he just draws him back, comes back to me, he just, ta he just taps the flag. Just let them know, hey, there's someone here. You should look out for me. It stalls him a little bit, buys him some time and from this, 51-29, this is a nice lead. Yeah, it's a nice lead at the right time as well. Fnatic, maybe uh, all that time they've spent playing this game, playing the games before it, they uh, really know when to push the sights, when to not push the sights, when to maybe give uh, GC a little bit of false hope as well. GC starting to uh, waver. Still bringing those four tickets in. Not going to be a problem for Zia as he does manage to bring B home, but four Fnatic players start swarming towards him. He's going to go down without taking one with him and too easy. Could very, very well force GC to make a final push here. Well, could in the past two minutes, two wow. just picked up six kills. And definitely, I guess he hurt us and it's definitely starting to step up here. But look at this hole. Drunks going in back for the back cap here while they just leave the flag. He's going to be successful in this. He's going to draw some attention back here. He's going to force at least one, potentially two to stay here, as you can see, kind of hugging this side, making sure they can go back if he does get taken out in the 1v1. But look at this. Ten tickets left to go here. Fennec just have to hold on here if they want to be able to pick up this first map. I know, Gamers Connection, they have to hop on, sort, uh, hop on a map somewhere, whether it's B, whether it's A, they need to do it now. They have seven tickets left to go here. Too easy. Let's see if he can pick up anything off this one. He's just waiting. You know, just, you know what? Just going to take some time here. Looks for the kill. He does peek out. Just going to continue to peek out here, but he won't get anything out of that one. He'll be taken out. A going to be capped over. C going to be picked up, though, because Drunks won the 1v1. And that should be it here. That should be that coming out of the first map with a one-map victory. Oh, well, I mean, GC's performance in that first half, and even in this one, it shows that there's some Real, it's going to be a final. It is. I don't think we're going to see a clean sweep. That map, maybe not for the Frenchman and Fnatic. Happy with that one. They certainly didn't want to. Uh, they'd have been in a bit of trouble if GC had secured that first map. Mindset would have completely crumbled. You see there, Valutaja, too easy. And Co. looking pretty, pretty happy with that one. There's Drunks look, kind of having a chat with the manager. He's like, Give me water now. Yeah. A little more harsh. Sprint on stage. Give me the water. No, wait, what's it's that? It's what? totally French. Was that French? That was German. That was German. Wow. Jason, you are completely American. <laughs> um, but yeah, as we can see, you know, 10 12 for Drunks, 14 10 for Morp, 16 15 for Too Easy, 13 9 for Valu, and 10 and 7 for Unfixed. Over on the other side, we had Rella at 15 and 9. Not a bad scoreline for him. 9 and 7 for Fred, I guess is as we're calling him now. Uh, Hex is at 12 and 14, Jika at 10 and 9, and Gia at 9 and 16. And now Too Easy is even calling out the sniper. I guess he wants to see it again, just so you can... Well, actually, no, funny enough, even with the sniper, they still won that half. So, Maybe yeah. it's a sign that it's potentially could be used. I mean, we're seeing the engineer class come out of nowhere, basically, as a permanent choice. It's true. Or we're um, not going to see the sniper. There's well, no, I mean, on Locker? I on Locker, we did see it before from... Uh, he is it Hex? Yeah, Hex, it was. It. So, Hex previously brought it out. It was quite a rare... You said it was a troll pick, I know, but we did see it. And against Fnatic, we saw it on Dawnbreaker this time. I wouldn't be surprised if he whips it out again, especially if GC get that early lead. All right, well, Fnatic is ready here, just waiting on Gamers Connection. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of banter between the two teams here, and GC is not ready. So the restart going to come in here, they're going to swap sides. It means we're going to have Fnatic over the US side and Gamers Connection over on the Russian side. We saw this one's going to go here, and I'm actually uh, really curious because Fnatic. This was their original map that they used to just stomp on. This was their stomping grounds. Haven't as much playtime on it. Obviously, when teams learn that's your good map, they're not going to pick it against you. And that has caught other teams out in other games and even in this game. It caught Vox out. Exactly. Vox, Vox challenged them on it and they lost 93 tickets. But, I mean, 
when you've got the when you've got the worry of people constantly banning a map out, you don't practice it because you're like, what? Oh. Hey, <laughs> kiss cam here. Well, it did say 18 plus outside, so yeah. Okay, that's the first of many cams. If they do that to us right now, I'm gonna punch <laughs> my producer in the <laughs> face. So don't even try that, guys. No, no, you don't do it. You don't do it. No, no, no. We don't need to come to us, uh, producer. Uh, okay, good. Oof. That scared me for a second. But either way, I believe we are live. So it's going to drop in a game. Ten seconds to go. Fnatic up one map in this best of five. And they will be over on the U.S. team here. And I'm really curious to see how both teams are going to break this one out in the beginning. And now, Gamers Connection. They played from behind before. Like, can they do it in a best of five? Obviously, it's, it's, it's tough to do when you have to play so many games in a day. You know, Fnatic, they only have to play a semifinal. Uh, Gamers Connection had to play their decider match. So they had one extra game under their belt. Yeah, it didn't bring that first map home for them, though. Let's jump straight into game now. I think we are live. We'll see where they take us. So, early doors, and we do see C going to Fnatic and B. So they get the early hold that took them, actually, to uh, a victory on that Dawnbreaker. As soon as they secure those early sites, you've got to react quickly. Otherwise, GC could get trapped in on this A site. And that's exactly what's happening now. Mort just pressuring the site. Not necessarily trying to cap it just yet, but clear it out. Get some nades. Oh, that nade, he, you know he's dead. You know he's going to try and catch that. He does go down to the ACW, in fact, and they're going to be capping A as well. Maybe you're just assuming, like, hey, we did get C, but that was more of a distraction. Wow. And talking of distraction, three players, three players from GC went to C. Rightfully, though, they're not going to stick around. They're going to start rotating towards B. And try oh, and drugs. Catch. He's going on a rampage. What? Three kills coming in. I think three of those were headshots as well. He shuts down the push from C over into B here. He's going to fall back now. He's got to be pumped after that one. That was a huge display of skill. And they're going to maintain A. They're going to maintain B. And they're going to get an early ticket lead now. What a fantastic start. Really, really strong play from Fnatic, dropping only three tickets in the first minute of this game. Fnatic, though, was all kind of down to drunks. If they, did, if they hadn't got caught out coming from C, that would have been a very strong and very easy to hold B, C, which have admittedly can be tough, but when you know the GC have done it before, this was something they actually favored Look in their this. earlier game. This is, this is the hold I love. This is the hold I love to see. It's not necessarily set up the way I like it to. Oh, no. Are they going to do it again? Is that drunks? Oh, drunks is set up again. Can he pick up another triple? Nay going to come in. Might connect on the one or two people. How did he get away with that? I don't know. Well, he's not being taken out just yet. As you can see, he's five and one here. And we'll be coming around the corner for more. He, he's, he's got the blood in his eyes. Oh my. He wants more. He gets a six one as well. He's not been killed just yet. That one death was from a suicide he did in the start of the game. And right now, C's even being capped at the same point here. Drunks, he's never usually the man to really step up for the team like that, but he's he's on par with Vile. He's on par with, uh, with Too Easy. And he's making this so easy for Fnatic. 146 to 97. They already take it lead. Yeah, and obviously in this best of five, if they secure the second map, it's going to be a real confidence boost for Fnatic. Squad wipe. As if they needed any more confidence. Tri cap and squad wipe. Yeah, so, I mean, you said this was Fnatic's map, and I think it is Fnatic's map. Even despite not playing it recently, they are still slaughtering the French team right now. GC starting to look a bit shaky. Five tickets is all they've managed to scrape from Fnatic. That's it. And that's just looking at the deaths. I mean, I'm we can have a little look. Nine deaths. But that means they got four revives. So, I mean, incredible stuff from uh, Fnatic. They're even bringing their teammates back when they do occasionally die. And uh, we can see now 77 already. Fnatic looking so very strong. GC looking for an answer, and Fnatic are not going to give it to them. So let's look at this. Look how many kills the side of Fnatic has. 25 to 8. That's three times the amount of kills they have. <laughs> yes, for Jason, over three times. But the fact is, you're challenging the big dogs on one of their original home turf maps. That's a ballsy play. Unfortunately, Cotton, it's not going to work out for them. But nonetheless, you got to give credit for at least that. I, yeah, they, they sounded confident in the interview pre-match. And I, the fact that they didn't eliminate it suggested maybe they were scared of some other maps. Perhaps ones that they weren't personally strong on, but they may have needed to consider just what their opponent was so strong on. Obviously, Fnatic, there's probably no map that they're really going to uh, be completely overwhelmed by. The defending champions. You can see Hexus though finally pushing into beam. Trying to get a two cap back, but they're almost 100 tickets behind. They've taken nine tickets in four minutes from Fnatic. <laughs> finally, the number 10 coming in. They have a two to one hold. They're going to lose as fast as they just got it here. And right now, I don't know what's going through the heads of Gamers Connection, but they're going to need like a quick break after this one because I'm pretty sure what's happening right now is illegal in every single state in the US. It's. You're absolutely spot on. It's not looking great. And I mean, if there was a timeout, they'd be wanting to take it because this is just a little bit of uh, damage control. That's like, hey, we've got 11 tickets. We had that in the first 10 seconds of the first map. So 
This is not what they're used to. This is a map we've seen GC on before, and usually the, their playstyle is so aggressive, so so flexible. They're always pushing a different side. Right now, though, uh, Fnatic have been in the driving seat from the first second, and they're not planning on leaving anytime soon, especially when more. Actually, I thought he was going to come out on top, but that one didn't. This time, we'll see Fred dropping that med pack, looking to kind of pick up any sort of frag in this mid area, something they haven't really had too much control of in the uh, early stages of this game. And I say early stages, we've only really been here for about five minutes and it's already looking like GC are about to drop this half. 137 tickets, that's a lead I don't think we've ever seen and this is in the grand final. This would be the biggest lead we've had uh, throughout the course of the playoffs. The second biggest was set by Fnatic on Dawnbreaker at 120, so definitely one upping themselves before. As you can see, 20 tickets remain. See, is being contested, will be picked up by Gamers Connection. Get on the flag, rather. All right, so he finally does pop over to that one. So Fnatic have lost the two to one. Respawns will be coming in soon. And we're going to find out, can Gamers Connection hold on to this? They, they need to hold on to this for about five minutes if they want to be able to pull this game back here. It's going to be very tough to do. So right now, all they can really manage is, let's, let's limit the damage. Let's make this potentially easier by limiting the amount of tickets that Fnatic can come out of the first half with. Yeah, and uh, the way best way to do that is what they're doing now. Keeping hold of sights. Struggling, gonna struggle though. I'm looking over at Zia, he's under scrutiny on Sieve. Oh, he does go down before we can switch over as the Seasight is relinquished from his control. You see everywhere <laughs> Fnatic go, a sight changes. It's really tough to see. At the moment, the deadly duo is Mort and Valutaja. This, you can see them now on A. Those two have really been kind of going together, holding hands, and they're doing damage this time though. Mort gets one with the ECW trying to defend A, and they're doing just that. Somehow, two players have just brought the entire GC side to their knees, and seven francs, um, seven francs to tell a lie, seven tickets. Now oh, five drunks. is just going to be put to bed by drunks. 125, it's not going to be the highest we've seen. No, it is. Oh, I thought it was 128. Okay, 123 then was the previous best. 120. Okay, and close. now 125. I was so close, but that is incredible. Uh, GC in chat said live, question mark, as it ended. Just to say <laughs> oh, wait, we were playing? <laughs> well, I mean, the scores allowed 14 and 5 for Drunks, 11 and 2 for Mort, 11 and 3 for Valu, 11 and 6 for Too Easy, and unfixed with a terrible 6 and 2 score. Oh, terrible, yeah. Uh, for us with the best frag of. He had more uh, kills Fred. than the top fragger of Gamers Connection. Yep, 5 11. And Fnatic, they have to feel good after that. So yeah, they're, I mean, they're they're in high spirits. They're smiling. They're joking with each other. You know, Fnatic, you can see the kind of mindset though. They kind of you know shrugged it off, like you know, joking around. Is this live? I mean, we we didn't know. That's yeah. a kind of a joke here, but this is no joke. There's a lot of money at stake here for them, and they don't want to get 3 0 They don't want to let Fnatic do this back to back, and potentially next season do it a third time. Yeah, it's not on the cards, really. GC, no. That they've battled so hard, worked so very hard to get to this grand final. In the end, it might not even matter. It would be really, really sad to see them uh, throw it away in three. Obviously in this best of five. A little Lincoln Park reference for you. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I heard you did Eminem yesterday almost. I, d I tried and failed to do Eminem, <laughs> yeah. Well, either way, second half coming up here with 46 on the countdown. Fnatic now on the Russian side. Gamers Connection now on the US side. And honestly, after this first initial push, if Gamers Connection don't win that, they have to say, all right, well, we have to think about map number three. We have to think about Lan Kang Dam, because that would be potentially the final map here for Fnatic if they can pick it up three straight. Yep, so I think we're going to be going into live. The way, I'm, the way I see this now, you've just put the nail on the head, is unless we see something ridiculous. I've got my eyes closed because I'm just trying to think if it's impossible. GC would need a trip cap from the start, and they'd need to hold on to it, not waver, not die, not... There's just... Too many factors stacked up against GC for this one. All right, we jump into game. Now, Kaplan, tell me what on earth GC can throw at them now. Oh, hello, Fnatic. Any, anything and everything. Maybe their computer is at them on the stage. And right now, as we can see, well, they're going to get the first frag here. They will get control of the B site as well, and they will get C on top of that. So we'll have an early 2-1. to one. But then again, Fnatic, they're not in a hurry. This isn't no like, rush. oh, we need it. You know what? We need to get 2-1 right now. They just need to eventually win this one with such a huge lead. They're going to actually get tri-caps, so you called it in that one. I don't know, as you can see, Gary's section only losing one ticket so far here. But Fnatic starting to pick, build up a little momentum. Unfixed, picking up two kills. And look at this, three men barreling down on this A site here. And Hexus, he better come out big. He doesn't have a sniper rifle, but he picks up one. Look for number two. He oh. won't get it, but the nade coming in from his teammate does secure one. And let's say Valo was able to clean it up by himself. He's going to get the cap on it. Right now, last man in the squad, respawns will come in on top of him because there's a three-man squad on the side of Gamers Connection pushing in towards 
nowhere because they backed away. And look at this. That's why. It's not a, uh, the easiest to site to defend now, Beat. Lots of those narrow corridors and tough cheeky spots to lean around. They're not going to find anything, though. Unfixed is uh, roaming around the top. They know that if you drop down, it's a bit of a commitment to the site. Right now, though, three players, almost four players in the corridors around B. And uh, GC not really in the best position to defend it. Right now, though, Fnatic are starting to lose tickets with this two-site hold for GC. And they are starting to worry about that B flag. They put a lot of resources in towards it. Lost every single one. Drunks unfixed and now two easy falls as well. Oh, she and killed himself with his own grenade. I think he's going to be resurrected by his teammate. A little unfortunate. But they do eventually clean it up. It's an apology. Again, it's an apology. Yeah. yeah. And, and then again, it's just like, once Fnatic get a two cap once, that's it. And it might come out at the C flag here, but here we go. We have unfixed by himself. Basically gets three people against the world here. And he's going to go down from this one without picking up a single frag. No, no, game section. A bit of momentum. I'm not going to believe that they can't come back from this just yet. Once they get Fnatic maybe down about 70 tickets, I will be more uh, backing of them. But they definitely put up a good show so far. Yeah, this is this, they're showing us maybe what they could have done. This is what you could have won if they had have done this in the first half. But right now they didn't. And with a 125 deficit going into this half, unless Fnatic are just so overconfident and they are as suddenly GC getting two kills they shouldn't managing to recover on that B flag I thought it was going to be a turning a nice shade of orange Fnatic orange to be specific and it didn't BC rocking the flags at the moment they're actually going to be rocking some spawns on the C flag heading maybe for an A maybe going to swap it over give up that B flag and start throwing some numbers at A but right now a site is covered in Fnatic players. They're not really planning to leave them site anytime soon. Drunk's the only man roaming around, and he's going to go down very, very shortly to the AEK of Fred. He does, and now really too easy in value charge. The two men we outline as maybe perhaps the best individual players are going to perhaps get caught down. He's been pushed into the toilet. The toilet explodes to his left. Valutaja hanging steady, another nade lands at his feet, he's just spraying bullets hoping to catch someone before the nade explodes, but he does go down. And now, we, after such a failed attack, I think this is the third assault Fnatic have failed on B, they're going to maybe start looking towards C. Start putting, you know, their just snow jackets on and head outside. All right, well, 12 tickets to work with here on the side of Gamers Connection. They have Fnatic down to 67. This can very well happen here, but Fnatic finally breaking ground, they finally got control of C. And it looks like Gamers Connection, they need to push it. They need to get some sort of flag back soon because they cannot afford to lose out too much. Gia going to push outside. Needs to get some shots. He needs to connect with something here. And as you can see, unfortunately not doing just that. Nade's going to come in and going to force him back. And this might have just bought enough time. They're, they're going a little bit too slow on this push on the outside. They finally do clean him up. They're going to get C back here. And now it's on the hands of Tweezy to potentially stop this. He can't do that just because they can hide behind the actual pillar here. And they are down to 64. 128. They have well, four left to work with. I want to say it's done and dusted now. Ye but they've been doing a fantastic job so far. They've, they've, they've been holding on. Job. If GC just hold off on dying and keep their, their sights, I think uh, you're right, though. It could be all over, especially now B is changing to Fnatic control. And uh, we see now the site going to soon start ticking over those tickets and going to start falling away from GC. And they have so little to work with. Two tickets remaining now in this uh, second map. Fnatic looking to get that second looking to probably wrap it up in three. They'd be so hungry to uh, just not give GC any momentum. Like we've seen it just on this map as an example, how that tiny bit of an advantage, that tiny bit of momentum. And uh, there you go, Fnatic taking the second and trying to just stop any sort of momentum from the French team. I think they want to go party. Yeah, they want to I get mean, out. This is it. I, they want this three straight. I mean, they, they looked shoddy in the first half on Dawnbreaker, but since then they've been looking stronger and stronger. Now obviously going to Lane King Dam, a map that we've seen so many one set of games on, hardly or suddenly ever see any close games there. We saw right there though that Gamers Connection, if they get the early, you know, two cap or whatever, or whatever they can't hold. They can't snowball really quickly. They had Fnatic down to 50 tickets at the end of that one. Amazing. So I mean, they took them down to 100 without losing 25. It's a fantastic job. And obviously, Lane Kang Dan, they're going to need to do the same thing here. And I think Fnatic, I think they can smell the money. They can just smell the victory right now because this is a map that they're happy with. This is a map that they chose. You can see the smiling faces as well. They, they're ready for this one. Well, I think uh, this was actually a fanatic choice as well. They won the toss. So choosing to play this map, this is a map that I'm, I'm still surprised that GC chose to play Locker. That was a choice. And they're like, oh, so Fnatic's best map or a map that used to be their best? Let's, let's play that. Um, and it did cost them, despite obviously we saw a demonstration of what GC were capable of perhaps on that map. 
uh, in that second half, but after such a disastrous first, there was no coming back from that. Um, individual low, I think I was really impressed by Too Easy in that first map. Second map, he didn't show up as much as perhaps Value Yeah, Charged second did. map, that, no, second map, that was Drunks. He was drunk, yeah. He oh, led a KDA, and he had that tri yeah, amazing triple the back at B. He was constantly picking up kills. He was the guy to really watch in that one, really starting to shine. And he always has the potential to do that. He always plays solid, but he has potential to go even better. He usually doesn't play worse. He's always like, you know, he always positively goes up. He never, you know, he's a guy that kind of like, oh, it's a bad game for me. He always at least, you know, goes about even. Um, either way, I'm just restarting the map really quickly. And we'll be kicking this one off. This could potentially be the final map of the night and the final map of the summer season. Or it could just be the start. Yeah. These last two teams battling for that first and second slice of 30,000. It's a big one. And uh, both teams know what's on the line. GC more than anyone because these guys haven't ever really succeeded in getting this far. Now they're here. Now they are desperate to see, you can see on your screens Exertus, PKD, some of the other teams. The losers of the groups. Yeah, you losers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> teams that, uh, they, I mean, PKD, great performance from them. Exertus too, taking rounds off and uh, maps off teams that probably uh, weren't expecting to. And so right now, of course we have to have our, you know, our hourly shot of a girl. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. just every once in a while it comes in there. But either it's way, we are live. Just going to drop in a game right now. Fnatic over on the Chinese side. Gamers Connection over on the Russian side. And I can tell you this. Fnatic going to do the same thing they've done before. Sending one mountain to the quad. And looks like he's actually going to have a quick flank here. He actually might catch him off guard. They're not even paying attention to him. He's going to sneak right behind them. And too easy. We're going to tie along with him and see what he can do. He can stop this A cap right away. They could come out with a trip cap if they're able to push on B quick enough. And look at this. He's taking his time. He's being patient. Oh, it's Interesting, and it's going to work to his favor now because he's going to catch Jika off guard. Jika goes down to the ace 23. That the flag is going to be his, and this is a really. I, I'm not going to. I'm going to say it's kind of a bit of a different start from Fnatic here. That's something. One, one thing's in common though. Across all games, they're they're dominating the beginning. As you can see, able to pick up a two cap here. About to get B in just a few seconds. The the most desirable flag here in this one. But look at that. Valu killing Unfix because he got blocked in right there. So I just get out of my way. Get out of here. Either way, two to one. Gamers Connection finally able to push in right now. And Drunks, whoa, oh, he's placed one so smart. He lets him actually walk around the corner, but he doesn't get the first kill on the Hexus. He gets the guy behind him on the Fred. And well, unfortunately for him, he will be taken down here. But Fnatic holding on nonetheless. A little bit of a ticket lead starting to build up here. But obviously, in the first minute of the game, nothing crazy happening just yet here. And Balu just, does he ever lose one on one duels? It doesn't seem to be uh, happening all too often right now, though. Cast my eyes to Valataja, the man who has actually just gone down to Zia. Caster's curse. As we jump to it's another Fnatic player, Mort. Looking to cast his switch it up. Side. Oh, he's going to go down as well. So actually, every single time GC try and progress towards this B site, there's another individual from Fnatic standing in their way. Rila trying to his hand at charging through. He's actually kind of in the thick of it right now. Obviously, these paper-thin walls are not going to stop anything. He's just roaming around. Other than, of course, his view, trying to obscure their vision B. <laughs> Is actually going to be uh, changing hands, but in the process, though, Fnatic sent three players. They realized that this might be on the cards, sent those three players over to C. And now, perhaps the more unusual AC hold is possible, especially now considering they can get these high vantage points and catch them off guard from the outside. They have drunks, like, right behind him. Uh, he's just sitting there watching them. He's forcing a couple people to actually rotate back to him. He knows he's being pushed here on the side and you know, the nade ran in it's actually laying right next to him he's got a move oh. here and he will be taken down for drunks and grenades just don't work they do not mix together but nonetheless the rest of his team has gotten the tri cap a b and c all picked up and here we go the bleed's gonna start to kick in is it gonna hemorrhage anytime soon and honestly with the way it's going i don't think it's going to Valo picking up one looking for a second you know, the nade coming in he's gonna at least dodge the one that's thrown back at him gonna chase him with the pistol just staying alive he's buying time staying alive staying alive uh <laughs> That's song number three. I just wanted to get on getting a, uh, ahead of you in the uh, songs brought into casting. <laughs> so uh, in the meantime, though, Top Chat do take up that A. So GC managing to fight back. I think this is the first time we've seen them with a two cap. And it's maybe a little too late. Or too little, rather, too late. It's now Fnatic R starting to screw in IC. Unfixed, though. Gonna be putting some extra bullets in that gun. Maybe heading towards the uh, surprising site. I think he's considering going around towards C, but in the meantime, Zia is going to come head to head with Too Easy. He's going to come out on top, and they manage to maintain the AC hold. Two Fnatic corpses now litter the C site, and Drunks is now in the center of B in the enemy's den. He's not going to do much with it, though. He goes down as well. GC, they, if they close this gap now with this AC hold, 
Fnatic are going to get forced into some spread out spawns, and that's exactly what's happened as we do see that triple cap coming in. That's going to be the tickets rolling away, and Fnatic could be letting this one slip away. They very well could here, and right now, as we see, they're trying to fight their way back, able to pick up the first kill. And I know, actually, unfortunately, lose a man for themselves. Relic actually gets charged straight into him, going gung ho right there, gets taken up by Valu. And then we'll be see, finally turned over here, and look at this, Drunks. He's in B. He's not spotted inside of B. He could act as a uh, position for a spawn. But he's still not noticed just yet. He's still just kind of chilling, waiting. He's actually spotting them out, trying to make it easier for them to actually penetrate this actual flag. Yeah, so holding on to A and B. The question is for how long, because right now it's not looking too great. As Fred, my main man, who I really suck at saying his name correctly, goes down. <laughs> Very, very excited ending right there. But either way, Gamers Connection, they've tied it all up, 88 to 88. Very close game here between the two teams. And Fnatic, I mean, this is the thing for Lang Kang Dam. Yeah, we're looking at this game, it's very close. But even if one of these teams finish with the 80 ticket lead, that's still not, to me, convincing enough for a victory. No, exactly. So we can't get too excited, can't worry, be like, GC are back in the game because they need to, they need to bring this map a bit more convincingly than they currently are. They have a six ticket lead. And bearing in mind the last map Fnatic secured, they had a 125 ticket lead. I didn't want to get it wrong. I said, I think I said 123 last time. So I, thought, yeah. I thought that's just how you say five. 125. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, fantastic work from Fnatic. Not as good, of course, as their previous work uh, on the Operation Locker. Right now, though, holding that B site secure. It's such a tough site to hold on to. There's just not, no cover on the actual central site. And uh, Zia is proving that right now as he's sprinting around, bullets flying left, right, and center, and he can't quite find the uh, safe haven he was looking for. He goes down. And, uh, Dalutaja looking to continue his spree. See on his scoreboard, he's rocking 11 kills. Highest on his team, in contrast to the highest fragger on GC's side with only six. All right, now Valu trying to push him towards the A flag. Actually, the charge coming in from too easy here. He's had enough of this. He's had enough of having a tie game. He wants to close this one out as soon as he possibly can with the high ground. Gonna look to take out one. He will not get him. And that'll be Jika picking up the kill against Too Easy One. Too Easy had the initial jump on him. Now Valu gonna get his chance in there. And will be shut down by Fred here. Now Drunks under A here might actually come in. I wonder if he's gonna wait for some respawns in. And it looks like he might do just that here. And he's taking his time. Realizes they have the two to one. They're built up the 20 ticket lead yet again. But how much bigger can they get it now? Okay, let's keep an eye on it though. Fnatic, they're starting to edge away. And uh, any advantage, obviously, is going to be carried over to that second half. I'm not entirely sure that uh, GC are inspiring much confidence in themselves right now. Not working the sights as they had in the past against maybe the uh, inferior teams because too easy. Every player, every time I see a Fnatic name, I'm like, oh, I've seen amazing stuff from him. Oh, yeah, no, I've seen amazing stuff from him. Well, they're a team of all-stars. They, um, they absolutely are. And right now, that's being completely demonstrated with a trip cap. No real pressure on any side from GC. A could be the only possibility to stop this uh, trip cap from continuing. And I think they are just about ready to neutralize it. They do try and get into damage control mode, but only 29 seconds, uh, 29 tickets remaining. It's looking uh, to be coming up a bit fanatic. Rello was just shooting his teammate right there as he uh, pushed through that A flag. You see a two-man push onto uh, C. And Mark waiting to receive. And we'll see if he will do. Pick up the kill on Ajika. He'll kill Gia as well for unfixed. And now the push coming on to be here. Too easy trying to chase down and track him down. The man who's trying to get the back cap on him. He gets the kill on a Hexus. And 71 to 21. Well, we might be looking at our final push coming in right now. And Mort just watching the high ground. Just paying attention. Making sure they don't lose C here. And the anchor roll, and right now it's working out so well for Fnatic. They're looking at, you know, 60 plus ticket lead here at the end of this first half. Yeah, oh. I don't know where it came from. We see Rella laying down the law there onto Velataja. And uh, 70 tickets. That's going to be a, around 60 tickets probably as the uh, time comes. Unless, of course, they hold on to this BC. But, I mean, Fnatic, after looking relatively, like, not weak. I'm not I'm never going to say Fnatic look weak in any of these games, considering they are rolling through this rolling with the punches they just keep swinging and GC keep taking them because right now we are going to see that one roll in and look at Fnatic they are putting in every ounce of effort they can they want to get this done as fast as possible and uh, I think there's nothing for them to be worried about right now GC I'd, I'd want a little bit of a break I'd want a team talk I'd want a huddle I'd want to you know try and get something hype maybe even bring back safe you know from MIM Get him to move. Unfortunately, I don't think they get that, actually. The time they have right now is between the first half and the second, and, you know, Fnatic taking their time, relaxed, looking calm, looking cool. They denied anyone from breaking 10 frags 
on the side of uh, Gamers Connection. Actually, maybe they do get a little bit of a break here. I, I, I thought they would not. Um, I used to look at Gamers Connection. They're, I don't know. They don't, look, they don't look that worried to me. I think they look happy that you know, they made it this far. But they definitely don't want to go out you know, without winning a map. They were the only team to take a half off of Fnatic, so that's one thing they have going for them. But that's not, that's not a victory. It's not a victory, and uh, GC haven't seen victory in uh, quite a while now. They got, managed to get here, but didn't manage to get any further whatsoever. Not, not really any a glimmer of hope for GC, unless, of course, Fnatic make a mistake. I don't think if Fnatic play as they've been playing, this is going to go any other way. But if we Fnatic start getting cocky, start making mistakes, that, you know, making plays they wouldn't normally, that is where GC would start picking up every mistake and punishing them for that. And, I mean, looking at some of these stand-up players, Zia, someone who did <laughs> such great plays, didn't manage to do it in these uh, in any of these games against Fnatic, so perhaps he's being a bit threatened and a bit uh, outclassed here. I thought I just lip read drunks, and he asked uh, asked too easy. What are you going to do with your money or your cut of the money? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> uh, but drunks isn't that BM. But either way, obviously swap at sides. 20 seconds left to go on the countdown. It is going to be live here. And Fnatic over on the Russian team. Here's connection on the Chinese team. And Fnatic, they're on the most favorable side. They're going to have an easy A B take here. And it's up. And Gamers Connection take this early change, or unfortunately, are they going to well, place only second? Is this going to be the end of the road for them? Okay, I think we're going to be going in live. DLHF in chat. Everybody is being incredibly tame and friendly here. It's it's surprising for some people. Well, <laughs> coming from <laughs> a uh, Call of Duty background, this is not what players <laughs> say to each other. And uh, we'll see where this gets them right now. Let's have a look. What the uh, early sites start with, we see GC securing C, obviously Fnatic on A, so their respective spawn sites, but the one that matters, B, is taken under Fnatic control, and we've seen how hard it can be for GC to retake this site, despite it being made almost entirely out of paper. I still don't really see too much uh, hope in GC's eyes right now. There's only a 70 ticket deficit. I mean, that's all that you, the threshold that's been laid down from the first half. But right now, not securing that first site, not getting the early lead that GC works so much, so well, sorry, off. You know, with that early aggression, oh. that's when it can go well. And Fred getting caught out on the ladder. Well, it's so very vulnerable when you do climb. It can be such an effective position if you get to the top, but. That's a lot of time without your weapon out. The thing is, Fnatic, they've been killed from there so many times by Mutual Makers and Epsilon that they always watch it now. Yeah. I, I, I've actually seen them get pretty pissed off in chat about that. In a kind of friendly way, but kind of not, mostly not. Um, but either way, 126, 125 now remaining on the side of Gamers Connection. They only have C. They're trying to break through, but look at this push into B. Look what they have set up here for Fnatic. Three men, one pushed up a little bit more aggressive, and one pushing straight through them. Too easy, the, the slayer of the team, trying to get his KD up a little bit more here. But the tickets, they're bleeding away. Gamers Connection need to do something sooner. They're looking at only second place. Yeah, and uh, Fnatic desperate to defend their title, obviously coming uh, off the back of a previous uh, win last time they were here. They just want another, they've got another cup on their cabinet. Fnatic at the moment really are, you said they're a team of all-stars, and the fact that they are still holding on to this with, they've lost two tickets. Dropped two tickets so far. Unbelievable stuff from Fnatic. And we'll see if GC have any sort of answer, any sort of remedy to the Fnatic disease swarming over Langkang Dam right now as they begin to consider pushing out. Obviously, Fnatic, they don't need to get that third side. They don't need a trip cap. No way, Jose. But uh, I think Unfix might be thinking about it. Only two tickets have been lost here by Fnatic. And I think both those are too easy. He's been pushed up both deaths. So that's it. it's too easy the man who's roaming around trying to maybe keep them uh, pinned in to see. Every single Fnatic player other than him is just hanging out and defending this site. So uh, we'll have a little look at what GC have got. Obviously bearing in mind guys if that 93 falls below 70 we are going to have our new BF4 Gamescom winners. I don't think the question's if anymore. I think the question's when at this point as you can see. Last man in the squad Jika I think he's tired of seeing that message. You see, down to 87 right now. You know, Jika has one kill. Zia has two. Fred has one. Now two. And Hexes has one. You look on the other side, you know, everyone is having a fantastic game so far. It's just standard Battlefield. And, you know, if you ever want to improve, get better at Battlefield, you know, show your friends this VOD because this is exactly how you play if you want to be good at this game. Fnatic, uh, a world class show, a showing right now of how good they are. Yes, indeed. And it's going to be a clean sweep 
Someone needs to turn up. If you are sat there watching this thing, Fnatic are just not... I mean, I could beat Fnatic. I could do what they're doing. Who are these GC people? Sit down. Come play. These guys have all... Grad uh, I was about to say graduated. Got here through the ESL website. <laughs> they graduated through the Battlefield Academy. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, this is a tournament that anyone can play. ESC, a testament to that, getting through the Go4 Cups. But they are not in the final right now. We're going to see GC starting to fall. In fact, they have fell uh, beneath that threshold. They have a 2-1 to one right now, so they're maintaining a little bit here. They have four, five tickets left to work with. In fact, they finally dropped below 140, so that's, that's a good sign for uh, Gamers Connection here. Again, they have no tickets left to work with on the side of GC. They're being back capped here, and I hate to say it, but this is going to be doing it here right now. Unless Gia can stop this C cap, which he's taking his time and doing, this is going to be a 2-1 to one in favor of Fnatic. Uh, but luckily for them, they have some pushed up towards A. They're going to get a 2-1, to one, or at least maintain it for a little bit longer. But now, every death is mattering. Mattering, it matters. Wow, Jason. Uh, three tickets left to go as we see him take down a 72. Look at this. Not looking great. Jicka does manage to pick up the frag. They're not having issues picking up frags right now, GC. A team that's never shy to uh, show their face on uh, sites, but they just can't keep hold of them. As soon as they get their hands up, their grubby mitts on B, it gets returned to Fnatic Control. And uh, I believe the tickets are falling a little bit too fast, really. B now. Looking to change hands, there's three Fnatic players around, too easy at the front of them, of course, easy t it's Drunks, unfixed as well, big players, they're getting so very close, this is danger, and uh, I as you can see, that's it, they're going to win it, and it was very well, it was so easily done by them, as you can see, they ended with 111 tickets, they come up big with a squad wipe at the very end, they're going to place first two seasons in a row, winning $10,000, they're happy, they're thinking of ways to spend the money, and again, they dropped only one half, the entirety of this, they didn't drop a single map. They worked hard for the four weeks, winning e every single cup. As Lauren said earlier on, they practice, they practice, they practice. Hard work comes great rewards. And now coming out of groups, coming out of the playoffs, they wrote themselves down in history again. That's right. They won one for the history books there. You now have your official winners of the ESL1 Summer Season Finals. It's Fnatic. All right, well, Gamers Connection, though, I mean, you still, you still see they're happy. Obviously, it's finally, finally nice to see some new teams. You know, Pyrogen in Season 1, they were the team to come out of nowhere and play second to take Meet Your Makers to a five-map uh, five series. And, of course, now in Season 3, we're going to have Gamers Connection go down as taking Fnatic into the finals. And, you know, again, beating so many good teams here. You know, Fnatic, one thing I want to point out. Vox, you know, earlier on, we, noted, or we mentioned uh, yesterday the fact that they are leaps and bounds beyond better than everyone in, Austra or in Australia, in the Oceanic region. Yeah. We see the same thing with Fnatic. They are leaps and bounds beyond better than every team here in Europe. And that kind of shows the skill gap that's across both regions. And hopefully, coming the next season, we see some new teams really start to rise up and really catch up and get on their heels. GC, exactly. I mean, we haven't seen them in the previous seasons in that top three. Taking second place here that shows that anyone is capable of doing it. And uh, we'll have a little look overview of the bracket now just to see the route that the, all the teams took to get to where they did. You can see Meteor Makers obviously getting knocked out by GC. This looks really that familiar was, from last season. <laughs> it was still amazing to see. I mean, MYM folding to GC was a great result. GC not minding to take a map off Fnatic. That was uh, not ideal for them, but still, I mean, Fnatic, you said that. They've dropped so little maps throughout this entire tournament. Yeah, I think they dropped like three total within the Cups. They dropped only one and a half in the playoffs. Honestly, congratulations to them. I know they're all individually hard workers. They all really prove that they can work together as a team. Everyone stepped up at one point or another today. You know, you think of Drunks just on uh, Operation oh, Walker. You think incredible. of Too Easy on Dawnbreaker. Valu on any other map. It doesn't matter. You know, more. I think it's the only one that hasn't really sh oh. show or sh uh, shined. But then again, he plays the anchor role so damn well. It's not a glory position. And he doesn't really care too much about that. He doesn't care that he doesn't get a lot of the limelight as long as they win and he gets his paycheck at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, there's a positive correlation between Mort being on the team and Fnatic winning. Um, so, I mean, he's <laughs> always there. <laughs> I think, you know, we haven't, we, we'd have to take him away to see if, uh, if he wasn't important. But, I mean, the guy, he doesn't pick up the frags, but such an integral part of the, the Fnatic team. And uh, every gear is important in the Fnatic machine. Very true. And obviously now they're going to get their paycheck in just a little bit. Obviously, uh, Red Eye's going to really give that to him as well as some guys from EA. And... You know, I want to ask you this. Across the entirety of the playoffs we've had so far, is there any match that stands out in your head as being really memorable? <sighs> memorable match. I mean, the Planet Key Dynamics game up against uh, Epsilon was a fantastic match. Amazing to see. Uh, so it was a PKD coming out on top after a really, really tough ride. So I remember, just remember Safe's face. We cut to a camera shot, and he, the guy was just head bowed. Really, really sad to see that go that way. And I mean, it was such a hard-fought game. Is it safe? That's, that's MYM, isn't it? Yeah, safe MYM. MYM. Yeah. yeah, so it's actually the MYM game. But um, <laughs> regardless, I forgot the opponent. All I remember was PKD playing surprisingly well 
I thought they were out of their depth, as we did perhaps with GC. But I mean, both these teams, PKD and GC, outlying as great results for what I expected from them as well. I think my most memorable uh, actual match was the Epsilon ESC game. Because ESC taking it to a one ticket lead. Oh, I forget. yeah, that was a brilliant game. Amazing. And it just comes to show, I mean, individually, they're amazing players. The only downside is they haven't really been together as long as a team. They're kind of like a, you know, a pug, a pickup group for them. Yeah. And if they're still going to take, you know, the second place team from last season and take them on a map when no other teams are really capable of doing that. And honestly, I kind of hope they stick together and come back in the next season, obviously, you know, coming up down the line with obviously the same, obviously the same kind of prize pool in Fnatic. I mean, the real question is, isn't whether or not they're going to win three in a row, it's whether or not the teams are going to step up and get on their level in terms of practice, in terms of hard work, in terms of synergy and skill. And I would absolutely love to see Vox back. I don't know how they're going to get the practice they need to, to do the same, that, well, to do better than they did this time. Obviously, the Australian team coming all the way over to uh, compete. Didn't go too well for them, but they're the top of their scene. No one's there to challenge them. It would be great to see teams show up. But I think it might be time, Jason. I think we're going to head over to Red Eye now with the awards ceremony. Congratulations again to Fnatic and also congratulations to Gamers Connection for placing second. Thank you uh, both to Jason and to Alex and of course Lauren as well for the hard work they've put into the commentary over the last two days. Has been a, another fantastic season of Battlefield 4, not just today, but over a very long season which amazingly Fnatic have not lost a single cup. It's the first time that we've had that in our uh, short ESL history of Battlefield 4. So congratulations on that as well. Thank you to all three of the commentary team. Now it's time for the prize presentation. David from DICE has very kindly agreed to present the medals and the trophy to the runners-up and the winners. First, a team who had never gone past the group stage before. They had one player who'd been here before in the final, but as a team, it was their first ever grand final. They were gritty, they were determined, but unfortunately, they fell one step short. Please welcome GC. One more for the team captain. There we go. One more time, please, ladies and gentlemen, for GC. Okay, that leaves us just one prize remaining, which is for the winners of ESL One Summer Championship for, for 2014 for Battlefield 4. They are a team who have absolutely dominated since season two. They were beaten a couple of times in Season 2 in the regular Cups, but this season they have recorded an absolutely flawless set of victories. Cup 1, Cup 2, Cup 3, Cup 4, and now the big one. Ladies and gentlemen, the champions of Season 3, ESL 1, Fnatic! Well played. Well done. Okay, I'm just going to grab a very quick word with drunks before we present the trophy. Hold on, David. Just tell me, flawless victories all the way through the season. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? Yeah, it, it's amazing. I think we'll leave it there. Well done, drunks. David, present the trophy to the champions, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the ESL One Champions of Summer are Fnatic. Okay, as we've said before, it has been a very, very long season indeed. These guys are going to go off and... Uh, well, I think they're going to have a drink of shandy of some kind. 
Uh, we're also going to finish up today, but it's not the end of Gamescom. There's still plenty of action going on. Counter-Strike is still ongoing here at ESL 1 as well. But for now, from the ESL Arena, Battlefield 4 is done for another season. Don't forget, though, there's still one more to go. I was a bit cheeky earlier on. Congratulations to Fnatic. Congratulations to GC on a terrific run through the tournament. And also my thanks to all of the people that tuned in all over this weekend and before with all the regular cups as well. Our thanks to the three commentary team and, of course, all of the teams and players that entered throughout the whole season, whether it was A-Series or whether it was uh, at the front or, or, or the back. It doesn't matter when you tuned in, but I have no idea where I'm going now. Which one? Okay, thanks, Mashok. Tricking me with cameras now as well. But that is it from the ESL Arena. Thank you so much for coming down here. We'll see you next season.